Welcome to the Keyhole Software EXTJS Single Page Application Tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll go over what an EXTJS MVC Single Page Application looks like, how the code can be structured, and then we'll start diving into what exactly the code looks like that powers this single page application that you see in front of you. EXTJS Single Page Applications, along with any traditional single page application, are called a single page because there's one URL that you go to. In this case, this is my, you can think of it as a bootstrap URL. If I go to this URL, everything I see on the screen is dynamically presented to me. There's no second, third, fourth URL that gets linked. Everything comes from this single URL. Inside your browser is where the single page application actually lives. In this case, what I have is a listing of all the users in my fictitious system. If we think about this in MVC terms, this is the V. EXTJS calls this type of view a grid. And a grid, as you can tell, has columns, buttons, and data. The data portion of that is the M, the model. The EXTJS term for model is thankfully model. So there's very little learning that has to go on, at least with that stuff. In my grid and any other component that uses models, they will traditionally have a store. And all a store is, is just a collection of models. Uh, you can think of it as an array of models. It also encapsulates the functionality of, well, how do I pull a model from an endpoint? How do I load it directly from the user? Um, all those sort of different scenarios are all encapsulated by the store but it provides a clean and consistent interface for my view to actually display these models, providing them in a you know, very standardized format. Now, in each MVC, there's always a balance between what should have a controller and what should just be part of a view. In this case, these buttons really are part of my grid, and what we could have done, and might have been perfectly valid, is have a controller and a view for each of these rather than making them part of the grid view and grid controller. If the buttons had, let's say, advanced business logic or something powering them that really was separate from the creation of the grid and the control of it itself, then it might have made sense to have them in their own separate controller so that we could have made sure, you know, it's very maintainable, it's something that is very well documented. In this case, since my buttons are pretty simple, I left them as part of this grid view and also the grid controller. Now, the interface that the buttons open is a significantly different piece of view functionality. So this view, this edit window that came up, is going to be in its own separate view. It's going to have its own separate controller. Its model is actually going to be shared between this interface and the grid itself because what I will load in, if I click on a record and I click edit, I'm essentially loading in this same model, this first one here in the grid, except I'm presenting it in a little bit different way than just read-only data on a grid. Instead, it's going to be inside of a form. Forms in EXT allow you to take a model, load in all of the data from the model, and create different fields that you can use to edit the data. So if I wanted to change this to Gardener and then click Save, you'll notice that it updated it here. Because they both share the same model, this was very easy, and there's a single representation of the data. This is something that people new to EXT do really like, but there's really one owner of data, and it just sort of gets passed back and forth between different interfaces. Now, in this small tutorial, what we've covered is what an EXTJS MVC looks like, what the different controllers, different views, and different models are that I'll be using to actually create this MVC, and then what the different separations should be when it comes to creating a new controller in view versus just using an existing controller in view.